guess who? That's right, it's Cece. Welcome back to my channel, guys. Well, I know I did a video um, last week <clears throat> with a kind of short, quick little rundown of what I suffer from. Um, I'm a chronic disease and chronic illness sufferer. Um, I have not seen a day without pain in oh, close to 20 years now. Um, but I wanted to get a little bit more in depth for all of my new followers. Um, a little bit more informative so that, you know, there's a little bit better of an understanding of where I'm coming from and, and what I go through every day. So <clears throat> this is just a little video. I want to make a shout out to um, Jenny O'Brien. Um, thanks to her, that's why I have this program. Um, it's a blackboard and um, she was the one that uh, gave me the idea and um, told me where to look and what to look for to get the program and I got it and Jenny, I love you girl. You're my sister and you're my best friend and you're amazing. Thank you so much, honey. I love you. So here we go. First of all, when I was born, I was born with hip dysplasia. And mine was pretty severe. Um, I um, had to be put in a full body brace um, for a few years after I was born so I was extremely late with learning how to walk but it is a trait that runs in my family um, it skips a generation my father was born with dy hip dysplasia I was born with hip dysplasia nobody else close to me was born with it so that's just to give you an example of you know it it, it comes in, in in the family so I suffered from pain from my hips all my life in fact I pretty much never took gym at school because there were certain things that I just could not do because I had the potential to cause my hips to become dislocated again because um, even though they had me wearing a brace my hips still even to this day are not completely in the sockets so that's what I was born with and then um, most of my childhood I dealt with stomach problems, severe stomach problems. Um, I was either constantly having stomach aches or I was constantly nauseated to the point where I couldn't even eat. And for years and years and years, I was basically accused of having anorexia and I never had that. Um, in my early, early 20s, I was sent to a different doctor who discovered that I actually indeed had massive gallbladder problems. So I had to have my gallbladder removed in um, emergency surgery um, because I had more than 40 plus large stones. People can have tiny stones and have like hundreds of them in their gallbladder. But mine, I guess because they figured that my gallbladder was bad right from the minute I was born, that um, I developed large stones over the years. So I had, they lost count at 40 something stones in my gallbladder that were quite large. And during that surgery, unfortunately, a doctor was an idiot and decided he was not, he'd only done one or two of the new lap, lap, um, laparoscopy ways of removing the gallbladder. And he asked me if he could perform it on me, and I said, no, do it the old-fashioned way. If I, I don't want to be a mistake. Well, he didn't listen, and unfortunately, I ended up having um, permanent liver damage and ended up n having a disease called biliary colic, which what that means is that there are bile ducts that 
connect your liver, your liver and your stomach and your pancreas. They connect one another. And mine act like a muscle. So they um, basically flutter. And when they flutter, they cause massive pain. It's basically like a muscle spasm. The, 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 the bio ducts spasm out. And it's excruciatingly painful when that happens. So I am on medication for that. And that funny thing is, is the medication that I'm on for my biliary colic, which causes my brain to tell my bile ducts and my liver and everything to um, perform properly, not act like a muscle. And that's because um, years later, I was diagnosed with severe anxiety and depression. And um, I was put on um, an antidepressant and it seemed to all of a sudden my biliary colic calmed down quite a lot because I'd had like seven surgeries to try and put a stent because it's the bio duct is like a tube and they would and, and also not only was it um, spasming but it was also narrowing the tube. So my tube was actually like narrowing like this. So whenever bile had to go through, uh, it was having problems. So what they tried to do at least six or seven times is they tried to put a mesh tube in here, which is, you know, basically just a mesh tubing to force the tube to remain open and not, you know, shorten. But unfortunately, when this was, when this surgery was done seven times, it made my tube open too much. I'd have a spasm, you know, it would, the spasming would happen and I'd lose the stent. So all in all, I lost six stents that they can prove. The seventh, to this day, we still don't know what happened to that one. But, uh, yeah. So, anyways, that, um, going on my antidepressant, and I've now been on it for 20 years, and I have not had to have one surgery on my bile duct or my liver to correct it anymore. The medication keeps it under wraps. Um, the next thing that I was diagnosed with very early on in life is I have stage four endometriosis so and that's a biggie um, I was basically lucky to even have my daughter um, it took me um, eight years to get pregnant, many, many surgeries, and I probably had 20 plus um, miscarriages, and in fact, I had a very large, very bad miscarriage um, six weeks before I found out I was pregnant with my daughter, so I... I, almost nine months after I had my daughter via C-section, I had a C-section to give birth to her. I had to have them go in and reopen my C-section scar because I had a tumor that had embedded itself in the C-section scar. And when they sent it in for testing, they found out that it had cancer agents in it. So there was a higher risk for me to develop um, cancer. So that meant that 11 months after I had my daughter, I had a hysterectomy. The only thing that I had left 
left behind was my fallopian tubes and my ovaries because I didn't want to go through menopause in my late 20s. So to this day, I am still suffering from endometriosis um, because they said that back then, um, 17 years ago, because surprisingly or not, my daughter will be 18 years old today at uh, 1 one o nine p.m. this afternoon. She will be 18 years old. And um, they thought it was the cure. They thought a hysterectomy would be the cure, thinking that um, endometriosis tissue um, thrives off of the blood from your system, from your re reproductive parts. But now they have come to find out that endometriosis actually feeds off of your hormones. So as long as you have female hormones in your system, you have endometriosis. There is no cure. And I've had it throughout my whole body for many, 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 many years. So I'm even terrified to this day to find out how much damage um, I have gotten from it. So... Um, the next thing that I had found out was um, a little over 10 years ago, I was diagnosed with fibromyalgia, severe fibromyalgia. And it's bad. Um, Unfortunately, I've tried medications. Um, the worst one was Lyrica. And I unfortunately started having hallucinations and really, really bad side effects from it. So I cannot take any fibromyalgia medication. So I basically suffer with it every single day. I have what I call flare-ups where there's days that my pain is really, really bad. But every day I have pain with fibromyalgia all over my system. So the next thing that I was diagnosed with in my um, mid-30s is I have COPD. Not happy about this one because this one was self-inflicted and it came from me smoking for since the time I was 15 years old. Um, happily, I'm proud of myself that I have now been smoke, cigarette smoke and nicotine free for almost seven years. It'll be seven years in October of this year. As soon as I found out I had, well, I actually, they thought I had heart problems first before they found out it was COPD. And when they told me that something was wrong with my heart, I quit smoking that day. No word of a lie. Quit. Right then and there. I was done. But um, since then, since I quit smoking, it took about a year. My whole body cleared up from the COPD. And to this day, I am not even on my asthma inhalers anymore. Uh, the only time that I'm on any kind of medication for asthma or COPD is when I'm sick. So that's a huge, huge leap for me. And the next thing that I was just diagnosed with um, seven to eight years ago, can't remember if it was seven or eight, but it was around that time, is I have... Ankylosing spondylitis, which is a bone disease. And what it does is it causes your joints to become fused. Um, this disease caused me to lose my teeth because my teeth became um, fused to my jaw bones, which caused them to decay very badly. And when I had to have my top and bottom teeth removed, 
I basically had surgery completely awake and it was major surgery because they had to literally remove half of my jaw on both the top and the bottom of my of my mouth and um I also have um other joints that are fused together because of the ankylosing spondylitis um, I get eye infections, which is iritis. I can never say it properly, but I get that all the time as well from the form of ankylosing spondylitis that I suffer from. Um, I've also lost a majority of my hearing. I wear two hearing aids now, and um, it's due to um, ankylosing spondylitis and fibromyalgia because my hearing bone has been damaged from the ankylosing spondylitis and um, fibromyalgia causes um, hearing loss and that's basically the two of them together has done my hearing in so um, I can read lips I've done I've learned over the years I'm pretty good at it now as long as I know you well enough um, at home I read lips but when I go out I have to wear my hearing aids or I'm I'm done for I have such a problem the next thing I have is six years, or no, sorry, four years ago, I was diagnosed with bursitis in both my hips. And they, the specialist then told me that it is probably caused by the fact that I had I had hip dysplasia when I was born. And there's not much that they can do about it, except I do get injections every so often. And they do help a little bit, but I wish there was a way to take it away completely, but there's not. So, um, yeah, this just adds to my pain even more. Like, yay, yahoo. <laughs> um, the next thing that I just found out that I had, because I just went through a new disease specialist and she did a full body MRI, and this is how we caught all this, is I have severe arthritis in my knees, feet, and hands and trust me it's painful <laughs> um, so yeah so that's another one that I just found out not that long ago and we finally by going to this doctor got answers on why I am not able to walk and why I'm basically in a wheelchair is I have I have degenerate disc disease and bone disease Basically, which means that my bones are becoming frail and easily injured or broken. And um, I have um, several um, degenerate discs that are literally falling apart. And along with that, I also have three... bulging. I might be spelling that wrong. Forgive me if I do. I have three bulging discs in my spine. And this is why I cannot walk. Along with everything else built on top of it. So basically I've been told that my spine is a complete mess. And yeah. I just have to deal with it every day. So that's about it for now. 
I hope everybody has a wonderful weekend. And um, I hope everybody out there stays safe and healthy. And uh, don't forget to go ahead and hit my subscribe button because that would make me very hoppy. <laughs> And go ahead and smash my like button. Because that would make me even more happy. Okay, everybody. That's all for now. I will see you soon in the next video. And um, that's about it. Thank you. See you later. Bye-bye.